At nine here, Big Town. Now, Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat bring you Fibber McGee and Molly. We also have Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Cliff Arquette, Dick LeGrand, Elvie Allman, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Fibber and Molly join us in a moment. Here is news. News of a bargain offer on Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat that will give you... 33 and one-third percent more of this wonderful self-polishing floor wax at no increase in price. That's right, 33 and a third percent more glow coat at no increase in price. For right now, at your dealers, you can buy glow coat in new giant cans. There's the giant pint that gives you one and one-third pints for the regular price of one pint. And the giant quart that gives you one and a third quarts at the regular price of one quart. One-third more wax in either can at no increase in price. Now, here's your chance to get all the glow coats you need for spring house cleaning at a big saving. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time only. Get one-third more wax at no increase in price. Get Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat tomorrow at your dealers in the new Giant Can. That's the McGee family car coming down 14th Street. The lady in the front seat is a Mrs. Dennison. And the lady driving the car is a Mrs. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. And I hate driving in this traffic, Angelica, although McGee always says... Oh, I think your driving is fine, Molly. Watch the stoplight, dear. Stoplight where? Never mind, we passed it. (laughs) It was green, anyhow. Oh, well, like I was saying, when that sales girl at the Bon Ton told me that chartreuse hat was very oh, becoming... Oh, I know, my dear. That's the same snippy little creature that said she just adored my hat. Because her mother had one just like it back in 1931. And I... <laughs> I knew she was just trying to make a sale because... Oh, look at that big truck. What does he think he's doing? <laughs> He wants to go so slow, why doesn't he straddle the white line like we do? These men drivers, they're so infuriating. Do we turn left here to get to your house, Angelica? Uh, yes, but there's no left turn allowed on this corner, so do it fast. Ah, <laughs> oh, I must tell McGee to get those tires oiled. They're beginning to they're beginning to squeal so badly, and he hates to have anything. <laughs> that noise? Search me. Sounded like something fell off the car. Some little part like maybe the back seat? <laughs> maybe we'd better get out and look. Oh, I think we have. Why? Well, heavenly days. What's that thing? Oh, my, I, I don't know anything about automobiles, Molly. As long as I have a good loud horn and a courtesy card from the chief of police, that's all I need. <laughs> well... I'd better take the thing home and let McGee put it back on, I guess. Well, come on. I'll take this side and you take that side. Uh, Angelica, how long has it been since your operation? Uh, Three years. And yours? Five years. I guess we're safe. (laughs) Ready? (laughs) Heave ho, girl! Just as soon as Mrs. Dennison and I boosted the thing into the back seat, I hurried right home for you to look at it, dearie. Good work, kiddo, good work. Probably just some little gadget off the crankcase or something. I don't know how we two girls managed to get it into the car, McGee. Yeah? It was heavier than a Hungarian dinner. (laughs) Well, leave the old master have a look at it. My gosh, is that it? That's it. Wow, it looks like the flywheel. Wow. Thank goodness it was something we don't need for a while. Huh? The flies won't be really bad for another couple of months. <laughs> now I better better wrestle it out of there and see what it fits onto. Stand back, Cookie. If that thing falls on your toes, you'll have to learn to walk on your hands. <laughs> Wow, that baby heavy. 
What is it? One of the spark plugs? <laughs> or a piston bracelet? Piston ring, Snoopy. Not the bracelet. I don't know what it is yet, but I'd better get it put back on anyhow. All right, right, sweetheart. I've got to go in and call Mrs. Dennison. Call Mrs. Dennison? My gosh, she just left her ten minutes ago. I know, but we were so busy talking, there were a lot of things I forgot to tell her. <laughs> I'll be back out in just a few minutes. Okay, baby. Ah, oh, there goes a good kid. But not much of a mechanic. She thinks a hose connection is a garter buckle. <laughs> yep, as soon as I get into my coveralls, I'll fix this hi, thing. Hi, mister. Uh, oh, hi, Teeny. Hi. Hi. How's everything with you, sis? Have a pleasant Easter? Oh, sure, mister. Good. I had a dandy Easter, bet. Good. My Uncle Carl gave me a little baby rabbit. <laughs> he did, huh? Mm-hmm. Sure. He was the cutest little rabbit I ever... Hmm? I says he did, huh? Did what? Gave you a rabbit. Who did? Your Uncle Carl. For what? For Easter. I know it. <laughs> oh, gee. He's got long pink ears, and he wiggles his nose like Grandma when she's got the hay fever. <laughs> Why does he have a stubby little tail, mister? Why does he? You don't know why bunnies have them little bunches of cotton on their rumble seats instead of a real honest-to-goodness tail? You don't know? No. Do you, mister? Huh. Hmm? I gosh, I ought to. I'm the one that thought up the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, mister, who are you? Will you please, Mr. Hmm? Okay, sis. I really ought to be getting to work on this car, but to me, hard work is like a dry swimming pool. Nothing to plunge into till conditions are right. <laughs> well, sir, once upon a time... There were three bears, a papa bear, a mama bear, and a bear. No, 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 no. That, that's a different story, sis. It starts off the same, I bet you. Oh, I know. Lots of stories do. Why? Well, because if you start out by saying once upon a time, it's a lot harder to check up on the facts than if you say at four o'clock yesterday afternoon or something. <laughs> so, once upon a time, there was a family of rabbits living in a fell-down oak tree. Uh... There was Buck, the papa rabbit, Molly, the mama rabbit, and Benny, the baby bunny. They all had short ears, blue eyes, and long, waving tails like foxes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Blue eyes and short ears and long tails. Sure. Well, sir, this bunny family lived right alongside a busy highway, sis. And the mama rabbit kept telling Benny never, never to cross the road without looking both ways first. No. But Benny, he was a smart aleck. So one day he went across the road to get to a blackberry patch and saw a blue jay hop across the road without looking. Oh. Oh, jaywalking, hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Yeah. So little Benny the baby bunny starts across, too, and wham, a big truck catches him right across the seat of his pants, if he'd have been wearing pants, and cut off his tail, all but just a little stub. And Benny hollers out, and he scrams back home. Oh, gee, poor little Benny. So his mama put some iodine on him and a big bunch of cotton, and they all had a good cry because little Benny had lost his big bushy tail. Oh. And they all spent two hours every day after that stretching their ears out so they could always hear a car coming. And that's why they all got long ears from the stretching, pink eyes from crying, and cotton on their tails to remind them to look both ways before they crossed the road. <laughs> Thank you, mister. That was a dandy story, I betcha. I thought so. But why do they wear cotton on their tails to remind them? Why don't they just tie a string on their fingers? <laughs> And because in this case, it was an afterthought, sis. Now, you run along. I got to get to work. So long, Teeny. So long, mister. So long. Billy Mills in the orchestra and Sunshine Cake.
McGee. Oh, pretty good, kiddo. Almost got the crankcase took off in it. Good for you. I'm glad one of us has a mechanical mind. Oh, it kind of runs in my family, Tootsie. All us McGees were mechanical genius. Really? My father was only three years old when he started working on a motor-driven baby buggy. Heavenly date, yeah. only three years old. Did he get it perfected? Oh, yeah, it worked wonderful, but he never used it. Why not? Because by that time, he was 22 years old and looked kind of silly riding in a baby buggy. <laughs> Hand me that monkey wrench, will you? I want a monkey with this crankshaft. Uh, probably... Hello, missus. Oh, hello, Ollie. Oh, hi, Ollie. Yeah, who's saying hi, Ollie? It's McGee, Ollie. He's under the car. Oh, oh hello, McGee. <laughs> I see a foot stacking out, but I didn't recognize the heels. <laughs> What are you doing under there, McGee? Or is one excuse for lying down someplace as good as an order? Huh? <laughs> well, he's working, Ollie. I was downtown today and something fell off the car and McGee is putting it back. You no, know, the same thing happened to me last week, missus. Something fell off my car on Oak Street. Yeah, what was it, Ollie? The flywheel? No, it was my littlest kid, Lars. Oh. <laughs> he was snitching the ride on the bumper when we hit a bump and the bump's loose from the bumper. <laughs> Heavenly Daisy he must have been pretty well banged up. Not until his mama see he wasn't hurt. Then she bang him up good. <laughs> How is your wife, Ollie? Well, I hope. Well, I hope so, too, McGee. <laughs> I'm just looking her downtown to obstetrician to get new glasses. Oh, uh, I don't think you mean an obstetrician, Ollie. <laughs> an obstetrician is a guy that's 80 years old. <laughs> no, no, dearie, that's an octogenarian. What Ollie meant was an optometrist. Sure, a fellow that always looks on the cheerful side of everything. Our obstetrician is like that. <laughs> You're wrong again, Ollie. You're thinking of an optician. Yes, Ollie. An obstetrician is a baby doctor. Hey, now you wrong, Messrs. Our obstetrician is no baby doctor. He's 65 years of old. <laughs> no, Ollie, she means that you go to an obstetrician when you're expecting an addition to the family. Sure, that's why she has eyes examined by obstetrician. Huh? She gets some dark glasses, though she don't get so much sun. It's daughter we want this time. That's what I mean. Come on, Ollie. Goodbye, Ollie. McGee, what'd you do with the big piece that fell off the car? I got it under here with me, kiddo, so I can match it up with whatever place it fell off of. I think if I can get this little bolt here loosened, I can... <laughs> What's that? <laughs> McGee, what are you doing? I'm drowning. I took oil. <laughs> coming down right in my face. Oh, hand me that bunch of waste. All right. My goodness. Look at your face. I haven't seen such an oily-looking character <laughs> since you introduced me to the man with the diamond stick pin who sold you the half interest in the emerald mine for $30 and took your wa wristwatch for security. <laughs> yeah. I sure took that slicker, didn't I? You did? <laughs> yeah, that wristwatch was only worth nineteen fifty. <laughs> Just goes to show that a fella's up and alert and... Oh, hi, Junior. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hello, Wally. Hello, pal. Mm -hmm. If that's you with the greasy face. Yeah, that's me, okay. Hey, do you know anything about internal combustible motors? Well, sure. I know all about them, pal. I drove a Johnson Wax truck for years. Big 15-wheel, baby. 15 wheels? Sure. Don't you mean 14 or 16, Mr. Wilcox? They don't have an odd number, do they? Sure. The odd one is to steer with. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> How did you ever get promoted to salesman, kid? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I was driving along one foggy night near Milwaukee with a load of glow coat when a bird threw, uh, flew through the windshield and knocked me cold. Uh -huh. <laughs> when I came to, I saw it was a carrier pigeon with a message on his leg. Uh -huh. It said, help, am being held by gangsters in the old mill. Signed, the Johnson's Wax Sales Manager. Oh, of all the phony, corny, dime novel yarn. Well, sir, I had no gun, so I grabbed a couple of large cans of Johnson's glow coat, rushed out to the old mill, knocked at the door. When the gangsters opened it, I wound up with a can of glow coat and knocked them cold. Well, that's one way to deliver the goods. Yep. <laughs> sales manager said anybody who was as handy with a glow coat pitch as I was ought to be a salesman. <laughs> Personally, I think you're a better truck driver myself. You're as heavy-footed as you are heavy-handed. And believe me, I like being a salesman, particularly now when I can make housewives an offer like Johnson's Giant Can Bargain, where they get one-third more of this grade water-repellent glow coat for the same price. I was shopping with Mrs. Dennison this morning, and we both bought several cans of it, and Mrs. Dennison said she all... Go to your dealer can. now, and that's what you get. <laughs> one-third more glow coat for the same old price. Mm -hmm. A pint and a third for the price of a pint. A quart and a third for the price of a quart. 
for the finest water repellent floor protection that money can buy. Johnson's glow coat that stays on and stays bright through repeated damp mopping. Why, when you realize, hey, hey, when well, you hey, consider, hey, hey, you hey, just hey, put hey. it on. You... So... Laxy. Yes, pal. Look, Mr. Wilcox, just between us and off the record. Uh... How did you really get a job as a Johnson salesman? Oh, Mr. Johnson's my cousin. <laughs> See you later, kid. <laughs> Better get to work, dearie. Maybe you can get that odd part back in place before dark. I think I got it figured out now, kiddo. If I can just loosen the pan on the hydrochloric drive, it'll slip the fan belt off the generator, you see. That'll give me a little more play in the differential. <laughs> you haven't got time to play in the differential. <laughs> you just keep on working there. By the way, what's that little windmill for in front there? <laughs> That's the fan, sister. What does it do? Pulls bugs into the radiator. <laughs> if it wasn't for that little gadget, the whole countryside would be infested with gnats and beetles and stuff. <laughs> sure flies the air. Now, let me see I if I... I beg your pardon, sir. I'm working my way through college, and I'm selling subscriptions. Go away, bud. Go away. Go away. I'm busy. Well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, I presume, are Mrs. Busy? No, I'm not. Well, how do you do, Mrs. Not? <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself I am Leavenworth P. Eaton I'm working my way through college Look, sir, can you uh, come back some other time? Mr. McGee is engaged Oh, isn't that nice <laughs> And who is Mr. McGee? I'm Mr. McGee I thought you were busy I am busy When I was talking to Mrs. Knott here, she said that Please, Mr. Eaton, I am not Mrs. Knott She's my wife well, if you already have a wife, how can you be engaged? <laughs> he merely meant he was engaged in fixing this automobile. Is that clear? Quite clear, Mrs. Busy. <laughs> that brat it, she ain't Mrs. Busy. She's Mrs. McGee. And who is not? Who is not what? Mrs. Not. I was talking to her a minute ago. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Straighten this guy out, will you, Molly? Glad to. Hand me that big wrench thing. No. <laughs> I mean, clear things up for him. Oh, all right. Now then, Mr. Uh... He's eating. No, I'm just chewing gum, Mr. <laughs> now then, Mr. Eaton, I am Mrs. McGee. This man here is Mr. McGee, my husband. Yeah. And you're Mr. Eaton. Have you got that down pat? <laughs> the lady is speaking to you, Pat. Well, I was... A... Doggone it, I am not fat. I'm McGee. Now, you listen here, bud. Whatever you're selling, we a don't... A magazine, sir. What magazine can I... Look, Mr. Eaton. Thank you, Mrs. Busy. Look is a fine magazine. <laughs> Would you like it for one year or three years? You'll notice this pretty girl on the cover. Cut it out, will you? I'll be glad to, sir, if you'll hand me those shears. <laughs> uh, it'll make a beautiful pinup for your garage. Now, just a minute, please. This thing is getting out of hand. We don't have time. You to... don't have time? Well, I'll start your subscription right away, and thank you very much. One year or two? Neither one. And hey, bud. Sir? Do you like life? Oh, I love life. Well, then get out of here while you still got it. Go on. Great. Very well, sir, and thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Busy. <laughs> the King's Men, and stay with the happy people. When old Mr. Crouch sat on his couch, he told me that the end of the world was near. My happy heart rose with a start. Power is get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. We got to stay with happy people. Have your fun, live in land of joy. Stay with happy people. So stay, stay, stay with happy people. Don't wrinkle your brow, it's strictly out of style. Just stay with people who love to wear a smile. When old Mr. Gloom sat in my room, he had me weeping many a bitter tear. Then with a start, my happy heart shouted, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. Stay, stay with 
happy people Where a grin has some fun Stay, stay, stay with happy people Start right in, get some sun Down to the endless ages Tears have been contagious And take it from me that misery Is looking around for company So stay, stay, stay with happy people your brow is strictly out of style. Just stay with the people who love to wear a smile. Got the answer yet, McGee? Know where the part goes? I'm still looking, kiddo. I've tried it in three different places, but it don't seem to fit any place. But I'll find it. As soon as I get these last three bolts unloosened and get the flywheel housing opened up. Oh, hi, old timer. Hello, Mr. Old Timer. Hello there, daughter. Hey, Johnny. What you taking the car? A park? <laughs> nope, one of the pieces fell off downtown, old timer, and I'm trying to find out where it dropped off in it. Well, personally, kids, I was never much of a hand for machinery myself. No. I was a more sensitive type, an artistic boy, oh. poetic. Wrote my first poetry in kindergarten. Was it published? No, there was only one copy, Johnny, on the side wall of Hoover Stratton's barn. Oh. It says, it's time you fellows knew the facts. Nancy's pants are flower sacks. Seems a little cruel to Nancy, whoever she was, Mr. Oldtimer. Oh, Nancy loved it, daughter. Yeah. Crazy for publicity. Grew up to be a right pretty girl, too. Won a beauty contest in Atlantic City and went to Europe. Miss America? Yes, Johnny, she sure does. <laughs> Had a postcard from her just the other day, from The Hague in Holland. She's a duchess now. Oh, married a duke? No, married a Dutchman. <laughs> <laughs> lives in uh, Rotterdam. I thought she sent the postcard from the Hague. She did, Johnny. Too nice a girl to write Rotterdam on a postcard. Oh. <laughs> well, I got a date this afternoon, kids. I'm taking my girl Bessie to the opera house. We got two good seats in the balcony. The opera house? There's nothing playing there today. The opera house is dark this week. <laughs> Who's complaining, daughter? <laughs> well, come on, Johnny. Come on. Come on. Won't be long now. As soon as I get this last bolt loose, I can get at the inside of the hole. Oh. Oh. Good hip. Mm. You certainly got a big chunk off that time. <laughs> what do you call that? We call that the motor. To... <laughs> now, let me see. The flywheel ought to go in here something. No, that can't be right. Why can't it? Well, there's a flywheel already in it. I think the car's got two flywheels, so this is a pretty old model. Oh, there to... you are, McGee. Well, having an accident, I see. Huh? Oh, hi, LaTrivia. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Were you ever in Detroit? Yes, I've been in Detroit. Ever go through an automobile factory? Yes. Did you see them assembling automobiles? I did. Do you remember anything about it? Why? Because sooner or later, he's got to put this car back together, and he's going to need all the information he can get. Well, as it happens, I have some information for him. What's your license number, McGee? 986-W5-Y. 986-W5. Well, that checks with my information. Hmm? Uh, one of our traffic officers took your license number downtown this morning, McGee. Uh -oh. oh, yeah? Well, you tell them ticket-happy hooligans of yours that they got nothing on me, boy. I wasn't even out in my car this morning, so, ha-ha. No, no, but Molly was. Hmm? Molly, do you remember doing anything wrong this morning? Well, my goodness, Mr. Mayor, if you're referring to that little bitty left turn I made on 14th Street, where the sign said no left turn, uh, I wouldn't have done it, only I had to take Mrs. Dennison home, and how does the city know where she lives when I'm uh, driving the... No, no, no. <laughs> that was not what I meant. What did I do wrong? You ran over a piece of city property, stopped your car, picked it up, and drove away with it. <laughs> what? It's lying right there under your car, McGee. Huh? Give us back my manhole cover. Manhole cover? <laughs> Never 
Molly return in a moment. Here's news, big news for homemakers. There's a marvelous new wash day discovery on the market today. It's brisk, B-R-I-S-K, the wax starch made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Brisk does far more than ordinary starch can do. Because it's not just starch, but wax starch, a revolutionary starching mix that contains a miraculous new ingredient, fabric wax, and that gives four wonderful new advantages. Brisk gives clothes the body and texture they had when new, gives that crisp look without that scratchy feel, keeps starchables 8 o'clock fresh all day long, cuts 15 minutes from every ironing hour on brisk finished garments. Tomorrow, try brisk. B-R-I-S-K. Johnson's Brisk. Get it at your dealers. Well, I'll admit I made a mistake this time, dearie, but the city doesn't do so well themselves. Huh? There's a terrible big hole in the pavement down on 14th Street. There is? Right near where I picked up that iron thing. <laughs> is it uh, about the size of the cover that you... The, the... Say, that's an idea. They could use that thing I brought home to cover that hole with, McGee. <laughs> I think I'll call up the mayor and suggest it. No, 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 Tootsie, no. They'll think of it. They will? Yes. Good night. Good night, all. of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantwood, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Motorists, how would you like to make your car look like new with only a few minutes of easy effort and a few pennies in expense? Tell you what you do. Tomorrow, go to your nearest Johnson Wax dealer or service station and get a can of Johnson's Car New. That's the wonderful wax-fortified auto polish that cleans and polishes in one application. It cleans as you rub it on, cuts through traffic tarnish and road grime that water alone won't touch. It polishes as you wipe it off, leaves your car shining like new. Your car shines brighter because Car New cleans cleaner as it polishes. That's C-A-R-N-U. Car New. Get some tomorrow. Next, Big Town presents The Silent Witness on NBC.